Hello class, thank you for watching this video. Today we're going to be actually going over counting methods and probability. So there are a bunch of exam review questions that we're going to discuss. There are about 16 questions on uh, various counting methods such as permutations, combinations, and there are also uh, multiplication counting principle problems as well as probability. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first problem is, if a die is thrown and a coin is tossed, how many different outcomes are possible? So let's go ahead and start with the first one. It says there are there is a die that is being thrown and a coin that is being tossed. So this is a multiplication counting principle problem. You have six ways of, of rolling a die and you have two ways of tossing a coin. And so in total, you have, by the fundamental counting principle, you multiply those two ways together, and you get a total number of 12 possibilities. So for the second problem, a bag contains nine disks numbered from one through nine. A disk is drawn from the bag. If the number is even, then a coin is tossed. If the number is odd, then a die is thrown. How many outcomes are possible? So it helps if you break this up into you know, a couple of cases here. So on one hand you have the even case and then on the other hand you have the odd case. So for the even case you have to be able to draw an even number from the die or from the disk, I mean, you have to be able to grab an even number from the disk and you have to be able to actually, once you get even, then uh, a coin is tossed, so then you have to toss a coin. So for the even case, you have uh, the numbers one through nine, but there are only uh, a few even numbers, right? So if you have one to nine, well, the even numbers will be two, four, six and eight so that's four even numbers so therefore there are four ways of choosing an even disk and two ways of tossing a coin so for the even case we have four times two ways of that happening now for the odd case we'd have to draw an even or an odd number disk in that case from one to nine that would be one three five seven and nine which is a total of five numbers so there are five ways of doing that and there are, and if it's odd you have to toss you have to throw a die so in this case we have the die there are six ways of doing that so in total there are five times six ways for the odd possibility now if you combine the even with the odd possibilities we're going to combine them by adding them together so you can really think of this as two separate multiplication counting um, principle problems, one for the even, one for the odd. So in total, there are eight plus 30 possibilities or 38 uh, outcomes. All right, so let's look at the third problem. How many arrangements can be made of the letters P, Q, R, S, T, taking two letters at a time, if no letter can be repeated. So we have these five letters, and we're taking them two at a time, and we cannot repeat and we cannot repeat them. So in this case, uh, there are a couple ways of doing this. You can use the multiplication counting principle in which case you have five slots. So we'll do five slots here. Now it says you could take, um, oh, actually it says, it says we're only doing uh, arrangements. So I apologize for that. So how many arrangements can be made? And you're only taking two letters. Uh, if no letter can be repeated. So in that case, you have five letters and you're doing two at a time
So in that case, you, instead of five slots, right, we have, you can think of it as two slots, right, because we're only taking two letters. And for the first letter, I have five options for that first letter. This is for letter number one, right? And then for the second letter, I have now, since I can't repeat, right, I can't repeat any letters, if I choose one of those five letters, then that means I only have four letters left to choose from for the next letter. And I'm only choosing two letters here. Therefore, by the multiplication counting principle, we can multiply these two ways together and we get a total of 20. Uh, in this case, we're talking about 20 arrangements. Now, the other way of doing this, since we are talking about arrangements, uh, instead of using the multiplication counting principle, you can also attack this problem by using a permutation. Because in this case, order, uh, in this case, order matters. So it matters the order in which you choose the letters. So if you had an A, B, that would be a different arrangement from a B, A in this example, right? So in this particular example, you're talking about arrangements of the letters, right? P, Q, R, S, T, and so on. So since they are talking about arrangements, you can also think of it as a permutation of five objects taken two at a time. If you did um, use that, then in that case, you're going to need the formula for the permutation, which is going to be 5 factorial over 5 minus 2 factorial, which is going to be 5 factorial over 3 factorial. If you calculate this, that would be 5 times 4 factorial, 5 times 4 times 3 factorial over 3 factorial, which cancels out and gives you 20. Uh, so there are also 20 arrangements using that method. So get either one of those methods work, uh, whichever one you prefer. So for number four, how many different arrangements can be made from the letters V, W, X, Y, Z, taking all the letters at a time, if V must be second and Z can never be last? So you're taking all of the letters, V has to be second and Z cannot be last. So here you have five slots, five letters to be chosen. And this letter has to be the letter V, and this letter cannot be Z. So I'm going to go ahead and write down the letters that we have here. We have V, W, X, Y, Z. So V, W, X, Y, Z. So those are my five letters. Now, there's only one way of choosing the second letter because it has to be the letter V. So there's only one way of doing that. Now for the last uh, slot, now if I choose V, I have four letters to choose from. However, the last slot cannot include the letter Z. So therefore, I only have three letters to choose from from that last slot. All right. Um, so then once I have that, once I choose that one letter, uh, then in that case, let's say I choose any one of these letters, right, W, X, or Y. Well, in that case, if I use one of those letters, I only got three letters left for my first um, letter. And then once I choose one of those, I have two letters left. Then once I choose one of those, I only got the one letter left. So now by the multiplication counting principle, I should be able to multiply these together and get my solution. So in this case, I have a total of 12 uh, arrangements. Uh, I apologize. 3 times 2 times 3 is 18, not 12. <laughs> there you go. 3 times 2 times 3 is 18. All right, so number 5. So A, B, C, D, E, and F are six students. And how many ways can they be seated in a row if there are no restrictions on the seating? So let's do that one first. So no restrictions at all on the seating. 
So we have A, B, C, D, E, and F. So if there are no restrictions on the seating, well, there are a couple ways to doing this. You're taking, you're using all six students, right? And in this case, the order matters uh, which student goes where. So we're gonna, we can all, we can say that this is a permutation of six objects taken six at a time. Um, or we can say that there's six or there's uh, six slots and you have six options for your first student then once you have that down you only got one option or five options left then four then three then two and then one Either way, it's going to give you the same answer because this is going to be the same thing as 6 factorial, which is going to be 720. So there are 720 ways of doing, uh, of arranging for part A. So for part B, A and B must sit beside each other. All right, so since A and B must sit beside each other, it helps if you write write this out as a b c d e f now it helps if you write this out as one object because a and b have to be uh have to uh sit beside each other i can only move this at a time right i can only move this as one big block of a and b at the same time i'm going to go ahead and uh, rewrite these these are individual uh, so i can arrange those individually However, the AB must be moved in as a group in order for them to sit by side, beside each other. All right, so now in this case, how many ways do I have of arranging these particular blocks, right? This AB block and then these individual CDEF blocks. Well, you can think of it as, well, and now I have five slots, right? I have one, two, three, four, five blocks I can move. So that's going to be one, two, three, four, five. I have five options for my first block, four options, then three, then two, then one. So this is simply going to be five factorial. So there are five factorial ways of getting this done. Um, so which is so we're going to talk, leave that off to the side. So five factorial. Now. I can move this in any number of ways. However, now let's look at the AB block. The AB block can be arranged as AB or BA. And in that case, the order matters. So that would be two different ways of doing that. So uh, that would actually be given by two factorial. So the AB block can be moved by two factorial ways because you have two slots, you have two options for your first one, and then one option for your second letter. So uh, two options, A or B, and then once you choose that, then you have only whatever, uh, the one letter left. Multiply those and that's two factorial. So by the multiplication counting principle or the fundamental counting principle, we have two factorial ways of arranging the block AB and we have five factorial ways of arranging all those blocks um, in any order. So we must multiply those together. In this case, we have five factorial times two factorial is going to be 240. All right, so for part C. If a certain person must be must not be on the committee, or I'm looking at the wrong one, sorry about that, here. A and B must not sit beside each other. So if A and B must not sit beside each other, so this means that, so A and B not beside each other. All right, well, in order to calculate this, or the easiest way to calculate this is, well, we have 720 total ways of doing everything, right? So we have the total number of ways of making any kind of arrangement 
And so the total has to equal the number of ways in which A and B are beside each other plus the number of ways in which A and B are not beside each other. So we figured out the number of ways in which they're beside each other, which is 240. And we're looking for essentially when they're not beside each other. So if we combine those two together, that should give us the total, which we found in part A. So basically, in order to find where they're not beside each other, you simply have to subtract 720 minus 240. In that case, you get 480 um, possibilities. So that's probably the easiest way to calculate that rather than doing uh, the permutations or anything like that. So for 5D, D, E, and F must sit beside each other. So let's go ahead and do that over here just to save um, some room here. So D, E, F must sit beside each other. So that means that we have here a, B, C, D, E, F. So let's put those as one entire unit. And then these are individual units. So we have here one, two, three, four different uh, um, building blocks here that we can rearrange. D, E, F must be moved as one big group. All right, so in that case, how many ways do I have of arranging those? We'll have, that's gonna be four factorial ways of rearranging those blocks with each other. Now, if you look at DEF, how many ways do I have to arrange the letters in the group DEF, where I can arrange them in any order? Well, that would be three factorial ways. So to arrange this, it would be three factorial. So in this case, we are by the fundamental counting principle, we multiply those two different ways of doing things, and we get our answer. So for part C, we have 4 factorial times 3 factorial, uh, which is going to give us uh, 4 times 4 factorial is 24, and then 3 factorial is 6. So let's see, we have 4 times 3 times 2, that's 24, and then we have 6 there. Hundred forty-four. Uh, I should be bigger than that. Uh, no, that's that's fine. That should be part D, not C. Okay, so that's fine. So we have a total of one hundred forty-four ways for part D. All right, so that's part D. So now, what about part E? Uh, so let's do that. Let's go back. It says A and a and F must must be at each end. So we said this was 144. So it says A and F must sit at the ends. Like this, okay? So A and F must sit at the ends. So basically these are separately. Now because they have to sit at the ends, this means that this group here has to be together. They can be rearranged, of course, but they have to be together. So now let's look at this group. How many ways do I have to arrange the B, C, D, E, right? How many ways do I have of arranging all of these letters in any combination? Well, I have, that's going to be four factorial, right? Four times three times two times one. So this is going to be four factorial ways of, re of rearranging that. Now, how many ways do I have of getting A and F at each end? Well, there's only going to be two ways, right? I can swap A and F, and that would be two ways, also known as two factorial, two times one. So there are two factorial ways of rearranging those guys, right? So I'm going to go ahead and lump that into one number, two factorial. And then by the multiplication counting principle, we multiply those two together. In that case, we have 48 possibilities. All right. Let's look at number six. How many different four digit numbers greater than 6,000 can be formed using one, two, four, six, seven, 
and I guess this should be like a, yeah, six and seven. If part A, no digit can be repeated, or B, repetitions are allowed. All right, so if um, no digit can be repeated, let's do that one first. So there are, there is a four digit number. Now, if it has to be greater than 6,000, this means that the this right this uh, first digit has to be a six or a seven so since it has to be a six or a seven there's two possibilities for that uh, number right we can choose six or seven now since now for the next number uh, once we choose a six or a seven then in that case uh, at that point, there are only, it says if no digit can be repeated, then that means we, we cannot repeat, right? So that means if we take out one of those numbers, then that means we have five numbers left because we had a total of six to begin with. One, two, three, four, five, six. So this means we have five left and then four and then three. And we multiply those together and get our answer, which is going to be 120. Now for part B, if no digit can be uh, repeated, or if re repetitions are allowed rather, then we still got our four slots, we have two, and then this time the digits can be repeated, so we can have six, six, or six. So this is still gonna be two numbers, because it has to be six or seven, and then you have six numbers there, six numbers, six numbers, because you can repeat, in which case you get 432. Oh, I apologize. Uh, this has to be, there's two sevens here. Uh, it should be one, two, four, um, five, six, seven. Yeah, apologize about that. It says one, two, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so I thought the lists look a little bit odd. So yeah, there shouldn't be two sevens there. So for part A, again, the answer is gonna be the same. They just wanted to make that correction. So uh, if there are, if no digit can be repeated, you can only choose a six or a seven for the first number because you have two choices. And then, then you have five choices left once you choose a six or a seven and then four and then three. And then for part B, you still got only two choices, but then you can repeat after that. So you still got the six numbers to choose from, six numbers and then six numbers or a total of 432. All right. So number seven, how many different five digit numbers can be formed from the digits one, two, three, four, and five if there are no restrictions allowed? So if there are no restrictions allowed, then you have five numbers. So you can choose five numbers for your first number, right, from the list of five. Since you can repeat, then you can choose any of those five numbers again and so on since you can repeat any of those numbers in that case you got five to the fifth power five times five times five times five is five which is going to be uh, we'll check it on the calculator here three thousand one hundred twenty five Now for part B, the number is odd and no repetitions are allowed. So the number has to be odd, which means we have this number right here has to be odd. The last digit has to be odd. So that means that we have to have one, three, or a five, which means there are only three possibilities for it being odd for that uh, last slot. Now the other numbers can be anything. It doesn't matter what the other numbers are. The only thing that matters for it being odd is the last digit. So the first digit here um, is going to be any of those numbers. It says no repetitions are allowed, however. So if you choose one of the odd numbers, then that means you got uh, five number one, two, you have five, you have four numbers left because you have a total of five. And then you get three, and then you get two, and then one. And then by the multiplication counting principle, you can multiply those and you get 72 ways 72 different numbers now the number is even and repetitions are allowed so again you got the five slots this has to be an even number now 
and so you have two and four so there's two ways of doing that repetitions are allowed here so you can still use those even numbers any of those as well as the odds so you got five choices and then four or i'm sorry five choices for for your first number and then since repetitions are allowed you still got five options you still got five options and you still got five options so you multiply those together so you get a total of 1250 for part D the number uh, it says must be greater than 50,000 no repetitions so if it has to be greater than 50,000 well this means that this first number has to be a five there is only one option for that right it can't be a four because it can't be 40,000 right so but it could be 50,000 and then some extra right so five or I'm sorry you can only use the number five here which means you got one option just choose the number five the next number is you can choose any number um, and it says no repetitions however so if we choose the five for the first one then we only have four numbers left then three then two then one in which case we have 24 possibilities All right, let's talk about number eight. So 10 people take part in a chess competition. How many games will be played if every person must play each of the others? So if you're playing uh, a match, well, that's two people per match, right? So there's, this is basically two people if, um, if you're playing matches and you have a total of 10 people to choose from. Now, in this case, the order doesn't matter. If I pair Mark with, uh, say, Catherine, and then that's the same match as if I paired Catherine with Mark, right? That's the same exact match. So here order does not matter, which means we're dealing with a combination. So in this case, we have a combination of 10 people chosen two at a time. And that is number eight. And then you're gonna be able to calculate that. If you wanna calculate that, you can, for the formula, it's gonna be 10 factorial over 2 factorial and then you got to do 10 minus 2 factorial either way you can calculate it that way or you can use the scientific calculator for the combination in which case you'll get 45 different ways 45 different chess matches and how many ways can a committee of four people be chosen from a panel of 10 people for part a All right, so in this case, we have, uh, in this case, order doesn't matter. You're choosing four people. It doesn't matter if the, if you're choosing, um, you know, it doesn't matter if, you know, the people are mixed within that group of four. It's still going to be the same group of four people. So order does not matter here. So we're dealing with a combination. So that means you have 10 people and you're choosing four. And that's going to be how many ways you can choose a committee of four from 10. In that case, that's going to be 210 if you calculated that. Part B, if a certain person must be on the committee, how many ways can the committee be chosen? So if a certain person must be on the committee, so let's do that off to the side because we're gonna need some space there. So if a person has to be on the committee, well, you have 10 people, right? So let's say you're going to choose one of the people for the committee, right? So let's say you have four people that need to be chosen for the committee. One of them has to be on the committee. So that's already one right off the bat, which means now you have 10, you have nine others to choose from. So how, how are you going to choose those people? Well, you can choose them in any order, right? And you're choosing three of them. So in this case, you have one person. And then for this right here, well, you can choose them in a bunch of different ways. So we'll call that a combination. So we have a combination or of nine people left, and then you're choosing three of them at a time. Now, but by the multiplication counting principle, we can multiply those two possibilities. And so in that case, we gotta do nine choose three times one which is going to give you uh, 80 should be 84 uh, possible total different committees 
All right, so 9b is done. Moving on to 9c. If a certain person must not be on the committee, in how many ways can the committee be chosen? So this time you have, you have 10 people and you're kicking someone out, right? So if you're kicking that person out, that person is no longer going to be on the committee. So that means you have nine people left. You have nine people left to choose for four slots, right? And order doesn't matter. So that means that you have nine people and you're choosing four of them. That's your combination. In that case, if you calculate that, you're going to get 126 total committees. All right, let's moving on to number 10. In how many ways may 10 people be divided into three groups of five, three, and two people? All right, so we have uh, people being divided and it doesn't matter the order of the people, right? So it doesn't matter if you're doing ABC or CBA, it's still gonna be the same group of three people, for example. So we have a total of three different groups here. So we're going to do three different slots. The first group is a group of five people. The second group is a group of three people. And then the other one is a group of two. So let's say we want to choose a group of five people. How many different ways do we have of choosing a group of five people? Well, in that case, we have 10 people and we're choosing five of them, right? So that means that's going to be a combination of 10 choose five. All right, so that's how you do the group of five people. Now, once we choose those five people, that means that we only have five other people to choose from, right? So if we only have five other people to choose from, so this is going to be five people left. So how many different ways of choosing the group of three? Well, in that case, it's going to be a combination of five people and you're choosing three of them. All right, in that case, order doesn't matter, so we use a combination. Now, if we choose those three people, we only got two people left. So that means that we can choose our group of two. In that case, it's going to be the combination of two people and you're choosing, you have two left to choose from. So now we can multiply those uh, three possibilities and then this will give us our total number of possibilities by the multiplication counting principle. And if we did that, we have 2,520 different groups or different um, sets of groups of five, three, and two people. All right, so let's look at number 11. So there are five women and four women in a club. A team of four has to be chosen. So it looks like we have a total of nine people and we need to choose four. How many different teams can be chosen if there must be exactly one woman or exactly two women on the team? Okay, so there has to be exactly one woman or two women. So we have one woman or two women. So we have two different calculations that we need to do here, right? Let's do the, the one with the one woman first. So if we had to choose one woman, so let's do, let's break it up into women and men. So how many ways do we have of choosing one woman from five women? I guess we're not, we're not gonna need the nine after all. So we're looking at five women. How many ways of choosing one woman from five? Well, the easy, the answer is it should be five because you can only choose one woman and you got five choices, right? So it's really gonna be five. But if you wanna write it as a combination where order doesn't matter, then in that case it's gonna be a combination of five women choose one, which we know that's gonna be five. And then what about the men? If we're choosing, if we're choosing one woman, that means we're choosing two men, right? Uh, or three men rather, because you have a total of four that need to be chosen. 
So in this case, we're choosing three men in any order from our group of four men. And then we multiply those probabilities or those possibilities by the fundamental counting principle. Now this has or, so we're gonna add the possibilities for two women. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and add this and now I'm gonna do the possibilities for the two women. So let's do woman and, uh, women and men again. So in this case, uh, we have a combination. How many women are we choosing this time? We're choosing two women from our group of five women. And in that case, if we choose two women, we can only choose two men from our group of four men. So you're gonna multiply those two combinations together, multiply those two combinations together, and then add them together to get your total number of possibilities. Uh, if you did that, uh, you're going to get, so if you did all of this, I'll write the final answer here. You're gonna get 80 possibilities. So the answer to number 11 is on 80. So let's look at number 12. The art club consists of four girls and two boys. In how many ways can the club elect a president and a treasurer? Okay, so let's do that uh, one first. I'll do that over here, part A. So you wanna elect a president and a treasurer, uh, which means that you have two positions that are ranked positions. So in this case, order matters, right? It matters who you choose first, because the first person's gonna be president, the next person will be treasurer. Or if you switch them, then, you know, then it's gonna be different positions, right? If you switch the names. So this means order matters, so you're using a permutation. So the permutation of, well, you got a total of six people, right? Six people and you're choosing two positions. In that case, you're gonna calculate that. You're gonna get uh, 30, you should get about 30 uh, possibilities. For part B, find the probability that two officers elected are both girls. Is this a surprising result? So for the two officers um, being both girls, so we want the probability that we have both girls. Since they're asking for a probability, we need a numerator and a denominator. So the, remember, the denominator is going to be the total. How many total ways do we have of choosing our committees? Well, that's going to be six choose two. That's what we did in part uh, A. That's the total number of ways of choosing any committee of two people uh, in which, you know, for those positions. Now, what about the girls? So we're choosing two girls and the order matters. So we have two girls that we're choosing from a group of how many girls? Four girls. So we have four girls choose two, uh, four girls arranged two at a time. And now we got to do the boys, right? Well, it doesn't really matter too much because the boys, there are no boys that you're going to choose. So in, if you were to do the boys, well, in that case, there will be, you know, there's only two boys and you're choosing none of them. Okay, so technically speaking, you don't really need this probability because that's just gonna be equal to one. So you could just calculate four P2 over six P2 and then you'll get your possibilities. So the probability here <clears throat> uh, for number 12B is two fifths if you were to reduce it, which is equal to 40%. So you're going to compare this to 5%. The cutoff for whether something is significant or surprising is going to be 5%. So this is greater than 5%, which means it's statistically insignificant. Uh, so this should not be surprising. So not surprising result. So it's a pretty good chance that both girls will be chosen based off of the fact that we have four girls and two boys and only two positions. 
All right, so part C, how many two-person teams can be selected from this group? So now we're not looking at positions at all. We're only looking at teams, right? Two-person teams where order doesn't matter. So we're, not, we're no longer looking at president, vice president, just in general teams. So in this case, order doesn't matter. So we're looking at a combination of six people chosen two at a time. And that's going to be 15 total ways. Now, part D, find the probability that a two-person team consists of one girl. So we're doing the probability of one girl. So remember, we're going to need our total number of possibilities, which is going to be the 6C2 that we did at the part A, or part uh, the previous part, part C. Now, if we want one girl, here the order doesn't matter based off of you know the question for part c that we're talking about in part d so we have a combination we're doing one girl from our group of four girls remember there are only four girls and since there's one girl we have to choose three boy uh, we have to choose uh i'm sorry two person teams right uh find the probability that a two person team consists of one girl uh so we have to choose uh, one boy from a group of two boys. And that's our probability. We have four choose one girl, two boys choose one boy, over six total people choose two. So four girls choose one is four, two boys choose one is two, so four times two is eight. So basically this is gonna be eight over 15. All right, so number 13, two cards are drawn at random from a deck without replacement. Find the probability of drawing an ace of clubs and a jack of clubs in either order. So for part A, uh, so we're drawing ace of clubs, jack of clubs. Well, how many ways of drawing an ace of clubs? And it says either order, so we're looking at a some kind of combination, right? Uh, since order doesn't matter. Well, there's, uh, there's, for combination, if we're talking about the ace of clubs, well, there's only one ace of clubs, or there's one ace of clubs from a, from a choice of four, right? So it's four choose one. And you have to do a jack of clubs. You're choosing one of them. And there's only four jack of clubs, or there's only four jacks and one jack of clubs. So basically four choose one times four choose one. And that's our numerator. Since we want a probability, we need to divide this by the denominator, which is the total number of ways. How many total number of ways do we have? Well, there are 52 cards and we're choosing only two cards. So in this case, if we were to uh, reduce this fraction, I'm not gonna show you the final, I'm gonna show you the final result. If you reduce this fraction, you get 1 over 1,326. <clears throat> All right, so for part B, we're looking at a red ace and a black jack in either order. So it's going to be in either order. So again, our we have 52, choose 2, since it could be any order. We have 52 cards, we're choosing two. How many, uh, we're only choosing one red ace, right? So one red ace from a group of, how many red aces do we have? Well, we only have two red aces because there, there's only two aces that are red cards. And how many blackjacks do we have? Well, we have a total of, we're only choosing one blackjack um, and from a choice of two blackjacks. So there are a total of two blackjacks, a black of clubs and a black of spades. So you gotta be careful with the wording here, right? So in this case, you have uh, this probability and I'll tell you what the final answer is. It's gonna be two out of 663.
Uh, oops, guys, I apologize. Um, for part A, I uh, didn't want to go too far before making this correction. Uh, this should be a one, and this should be a one. I apologize about that. Um, I said that there were four cards that you can choose from. There's only one card that you can choose from. The first card has to be an ace of clubs, and there's only one ace of clubs, and you got to choose one of them. So I apologize for that. Again, the wording uh, is you really got to be careful about the wording. So if it's an ace, just a generic ace, then in that case, that would be four, right? And you're choosing one. But they're talking about ace of clubs. There's only one ace of clubs. And there's only one jack of clubs. One of these guys, one of these guys. So it's one choose one, one choose one. So I apologize about that. Wanted to make that correction. Now there's only two red aces and two black jacks. So the part B is correct. All right. Uh, so for part C, uh, we want two jacks. And then part D is two clubs. So let's do part thir number 13 over here. So two jacks, the probability of two jacks, and then part D, the probability of two clubs. I believe that's what it said. Let's double check. Two clubs, okay. Now for the two jacks, we have our denominator is going to be the same. It's still going to be 52 choose two, right? So now in this case, uh, for our jacks, for our jacks, we have how many jacks in total? Well, we have four jacks, right? Four jacks in total, and we're choosing two of them. Okay, so that's my probability. Four choose two over 52 choose two. Since we're only looking at the jacks, and therefore we can calculate that probability, we get, um, let's see, for part C, should turn out to be one over 221 for the final answer there. All right, so for part D, we're looking at clubs. So we have 52, choose two for our denominator still. We're only choosing two cards from 52 and we're looking at two clubs, but it doesn't matter the order, but you have two and you're choosing from how many clubs? How many clubs are there? Well, there are a total of 13 clubs. 13 clubs, 13 per suit. So in that case, if we were to uh, reduce that fraction, the final, final answer is going to be one out of 17. All right, so that's part. Uh, D, part E, we want an ace and a jack in either order. So in this case, um, ace and a jack, and uh, it's going to be a combination because um, order doesn't matter. So ace and jack in either order, and F is ace and jack in that order. Okay. Ace and jack. Um, Order doesn't matter. Ace and Jack in that order. Okay. So if we want Ace and Jack and order doesn't matter, well then, well, we're still going to be, you're, it doesn't matter the order of the cards. So uh, therefore, the, it's a combination, 52 choose 2. On the numerator, you're looking for the aces. So um, you're going to choose one ace out of four aces. And you're going to choose one jack out of four jacks. So you multiply those together and you get your probability. You get eight out of 663. Now for part F, um, we want an ace and jack in that order. So it's a very specific order. So if you want that very specific order, uh, well, in that case, this is no longer going to be a combination. It's going to be a permutation because order matters, right? So there are that many ways of doing uh, permutations of in which order matters. So that's our denominator. As far as our numerator is concerned, we're looking for, let's do the aces. 
So for the aces, now order matters. So we're looking at a permutation of one, choose four, and then a permutation of one, choose four for the jack. Again, order uh, mattering here, right? So order does matter. All right, so in that case, it'll be the fraction, the final fraction be four out of 663. So basically half of the chances of the ace and jack where the order doesn't matter, which kind of makes sense because you, since you have twice as much of a chance if order, does, if order um, doesn't matter um, because you know it has to be ace and jack in this case. In the other case, it could be jack and ace and it would still count. So you have two times more of a chance to get that combination, if that makes sense. <clears throat> All right, so this uh, math actually works out and it makes sense logically. So number 14, a three digit numeral is formed by selecting digits at random from two, four, six, seven without repetition. Find the probability that the number formed is less than a 700. Okay, so for part A, you have a three digit numeral so if it has to be less than 700, this digit, this first digit, has to be a 2, 4, or 6. Any one of those. So we have three options for that first numeral. Now, it does, and it says that the digit numeral is selected without repetition, so no, rep, no repeats. So if we choose one of these um, three numbers, then that means we have three numbers left for the next one. And then after that, once we choose one of those three, then at that point, we only got two options left for our last number. In this case, we have three times three times two, or 18 possibilities. Um, now, oh, that's not the final answer though. <laughs> so, because they're asking for the probability. So if we're talking about probability, well, we have the probability of that occurring, right? So probability of less than 700. Uh, I'll actually do this off to the side because I, I want to save some space. So probability that is less than 700. Well, we just did our, our numerator, right? Our numerator is three times three times two, which is 18. And then our denominator, well, how many total possibilities are there of choosing the numbers without repetition? without regard to like how big the number is. Well, in that case, there are four numbers, then three, then two. So that's gonna be our fraction. So it turns out that'll be 18 over, 18 over 24, which we gotta reduce that. And that reduces to three fourths. So the answer to part A is three-fourths. Now for part B, the probability that it's greater than 600, well, the denominator is still going to be 4 times 3 times 2. Our numerator is going to be greater than 600, so the first digit has to be a 6 or 7. So that's two options for that first digit. Once we choose that first digit, we have three possibilities and then two possibilities. So that's going to be 12 out of 24, which is going to be a half. So for part C, uh, contains only even digits. So even digits. So if it can only contain even digits, there should be a small chance of this happening just because it's very restrictive. So our denominator is still going to be 4 times 3 times 2. Our numerator, however, it can only have even digits. So there's only, uh, let's see here, 1, 2, 3. There's only three even digits, right? So this means that we have three options for that, and then 2, and then 1, and that's it. There are no more options here for even numbers. So we got six over 24, which is one fourth. 
Now part D is it's an even number. That's different than if it has all even digits, right? So for an even number, denominator is still going to be 24, but our numerator Go ahead and make this uh, smaller. Uh, here, I'll go ahead and actually uh, delete that. Okay. Go ahead and actually delete that. So here we have. Uh, just an even number. So we have 24 for the bottom. If it has to be an even number, then this digit has to be even. So we got three options for that digit because that, we got two, four, and six. Once we choose that number, then the first digit we only have at that point three options and then two. So in this case, it's gonna be, still gonna be 18 over 24, which is gonna be three fourths. All right, so let's do number 15. Uh, Lou Grant is an editor at a newspaper employing 10 reporters and three photographers. Uh, we're not, we're not, uh, part D is not, is a question that we ended up tossing out, so we're not doing part D. Um, okay, so if Lou selects two reporters and one photographer to cover a story, from how many three-person teams can he choose? So two reporters, one photographer, and you're choosing three people. So two reporters, one, okay, so... If we're choosing three people, then it's a combination, right? Uh, now, order doesn't matter here. It doesn't matter the order of the photographers. We're just choosing teams. So we have two photographers or two reporters being chosen from a group of 10. So this is for our reporters. Now let's do our photographers. We are choosing one photographer from a group of three. And by the fundamental counting principle, if we multiply those, we get our total number of combinations. So we have 135 teams. So part B, if Lou hands out one assignment per reporter, in how many ways can he assign the first three stories to his 10 reporters? Oh, by the way, for part A, um, yeah, for part A, there's another way that you can actually calculate this. The other way to calculate this is you have three slots and for the reporters you have 10 choices for that reporter and then once you choose that reporter then you only got nine reporters to choose from and that will be two reporters. And then for your photographer, well you only got three options for your photographer, right? So we have three to choose from. In that case, uh, let me double check here, see if the numbers work out. Okay, um, so you could do that. And then now, since order, since order doesn't matter, um, since order doesn't matter at all, right? Then in this case, you can, and you're choosing two reporters, well then you can easily swap those two reporters and it would not count, right? So we can divide by, um, you know, the two times one. Now, if that's confusing, don't worry about it. it you know, you're still going to get the same answer regardless of which way you choose. I generally, I, I, you know, prefer the combination because you don't have to really think about it too much. You can just, uh, you know, use the numbers that they give you. But either way, you'll get the same, you know, answer. So part B, if Lou hands out one assignment per reporter, in how many ways can he assign the first three stories to his 10 reporters? So, so in this case, three stories to the 10 reporters, one assignment per reporter. So again, a few ways, you know, a couple ways that you could probably think about doing this. So for the first part, we could think of it as, you know, three reporters 
Now, since he, he hands out one assignment, this means that he has 10 choices for the first reporter. Once he hands out that assignment, that assignment can no longer uh, be assigned to anybody else. So he only has nine choices from that point on. Then once he hands out that assignment, then he only has eight to choose from. Now note that it matters the order in which the assignments are done because the first port reporter will get a, a particular assignment and that's a very specific assignment. Uh, so it matters the order in which he gives out the assignments. So you can think of it as 10 times 9 times 8, or you can just think of it as a permutation <clears throat> of 10 people chosen three at a time. Either way, you're going to get the same answer, 720 uh, total ways of doing that. If Lou plans to give the first story to Rossi, a reporter, in how many ways can he now assign the first three story, stories? So in this case, Rossi is, has the first, has the assignment, right? So has the report. The first story goes to him. So that means the second and third stories go to the rest, right? Um, the first three uh, stories, okay. So in this case, we got two people left to choose from. Uh, let's see here. And how many ways can you now assign the first three stories? Now we're assuming that the stories are going to the other reporters, right? So we got, so for this, let's combine this under one slot. We have two reporters, two people that we got to give it to left. And we have, uh, let's see, we have nine reporters left to choose from, right? Reporters to choose from, uh, or, so you can use that, or you could just use one and then you got nine left reporters to choose from and eight left reporters to choose from. Either way, you're gonna get the same exact answer. You're gonna get 72 ways for part C. All right, so number 16, there are the last one. There are eight candidates for three seats in the student government, no specific positions. The candidates include three boys and five girls. If all candidates have an equal chance of winning, find the probability that the winners include. So part A, three boys. Is this surprising if it happens? Okay, so three boys, we need the probability of three boys. So we need a numerator and a denominator. So we have uh, eight candidates, three seats. So that means we have eight people and it doesn't matter the order of the of the um, the seats, right? The positions, because there are no specific positions. You're just choosing teams here. So we're using a combination. Eight people choose three. Now our numerator, we have three boys, so and we only have three seats. So we have we're choosing three from three boys. And then for the girls, we're choosing none of the girls from five. So you don't really have to include this because that's just going to be one. It's not going to do anything to the problem. And uh, so, and there's only one way of choosing that. So if you were to calculate it, you would just get the fraction one out of 56. Now this is going to be 0.018%. So it's very small, which is, this is actually going to be less than 5%. If it's less than or equal to 5%, then we generally regard that as statistically significant. And so we should be surprised. Um, surprising result. So basically you should be surprised at the result because it's such a low chance of happening. So there's actually a very good chance that these three boys were specifically selected because all three boys being selected when there's five girls is very uh, small chance of that happening. So there may be a bias uh, involved. Maybe someone is biased and want to choose only the boys or something like that because it's a very small chance of that happening if it was due to chance alone. 
All right, so what's the probability of getting one boy? That one should be a much greater probability of happening than with three boys. So let's calculate that. So for part B, our denominator is still going to be A choose three. Our numerator now is going to be we have three boys, we're choosing one, and we have five girls and we're choosing two. If we're choosing one boy, this means we're choosing two girls. So this probability is 15 over 28, which if you calculate that, that's greater than 50%. So it makes sense that there's, this is likely to happen. All right, so part C, at least two girls. So if it says at least two girls, this means two girls or three girls, right? At least means two or more. So that means we have two different probabilities. We need to do the probability of two girls plus the probability of three girls. So for two girls, we still got the total of eight choose three for both probabilities. For two girls, well, we have five girls and we're choosing two, which means that we're only choosing one boy out of three. And then for the three girls, well, we have five girls choosing three. And then for the boys, zero boys chosen from a group of three boys. So basically, this doesn't really matter. It's just going to be one. So we're going to calculate these two fractions and then combine them together by adding. If you did that, you're going to get five out of seven. So there's a pretty good chance of having two or three girls on the committee or, yeah, in this group. And the last one, Maria, Peter, and anybody else. So Maria, Peter, and then somebody else. And someone else. Okay. So again, the order doesn't matter. It could be Maria Peter or Peter Maria and then someone else. So in this case, we have, we still got eight choose three for the total. But now the top, we have one way of choosing Maria. We only have one way of choosing Peter. So really it's the combination of one choose one, combination of one choose one, which is the same thing as one and one, right? It doesn't really change anything. And then the third slot, the third person, has to be anybody else. So at that point, you can choose anybody uh, as long as it's not Maria and Peter. So that means if you took those two out of the equation, we only got six people to choose from, and we're only choosing one of those people. So basically, six options. So if you were to calculate this, you get three out of 28. All right, guys, that's it for the video. I uh, hope you learned something um, new or, you know, this was a good refresher and I'll see you in the next one.